Hi, I'm John. Welcome back to Dice Paper Miniatures. In today's episode, we're looking at all of the previews for next Saturday's pre-order from Games Workshop. All right, let's begin. Okay, so we're back at it with Sunday previews, and there's a ton of stuff, honestly, <laughs> that was previewed this Sunday for pre-order on next Saturday. And they start off with the Night Haunts and the Daughters of Cain. We knew this one was coming. So we're going to get the new battle tome for the Night Haunts. We'll also see that we get the battle tome for the Daughters of Cain too. But we're starting off with the Night Haunts here. We're also getting a few of the models they've been spoiling here for the last few, well, almost a month now, ever since Adepticon. This is when this particular one, Alrak the Drowner, was previewed. I have a previous video going over this model. If you want to check that out, there's a link somewhere up above for that one. But while we're here, let's keep going on. Because also, they've released the Craven Throne Guard as a separate unit box set. So this was originally released in the Arena of Shades, which is from a box set I also did a video on. Again. Probably a link somewhere up above. But uh, yeah, this was from that box set. One of the best value box sets I think they've had in a long time. Stick around in an upcoming video because there's a new box set coming out for the Sylvaneth and Skaven, which I'm not sure is as good as a value. And in that video, I'll explain why. But this Craven Throne Guard, mechanically right now, not the best of units, but... They may get some love once the new Battle Tome comes out and we get an update. It's very possible. I still think there's some potential value to these guys. They don't do a lot of damage, but they don't have to have line of sight. So you can just put them behind a piece of terrain and just, you know, whittle away at the opponents while your main units are just like charging in. So another thing that's been released here is the Ethereal Court. Now this one I find pretty interesting because I believe one of these models, if not two, I haven't been around for quite a while. You can only get, well, I believe it's the Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed. That was from the original Soul Wars box set for Age of Sigmar 2.0. So I don't think that was ever released individually. I think that only came in the box. So let's see what it has to say. If the word Craven is popping up too often for your liking, you can instill some ghostly backbone into your tormented hordes with the Ethereal Court which collects three mighty heroes, the Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed, a Spirit Torment, and the Guardian of Souls. These have been away from the range for a while, so grab them to bolster your terrifying forces. So I'm wondering, initially when I saw this, I thought maybe they're going to get released individually, but this might be just a new box set called the Ethereal Court. I'll be curious to see what that actually looks like when it goes to pre-order on Saturday. If it is, uh, I don't know how I feel about buying all three together. But we'll find out. And then they're also releasing here for this pre-order on next Saturday. It's just some new Vanguard box sets. I won't go into the value of each one of these, but I'll just kind of mention them. Uh, the Eidneth Deepkin, which consists of a raiding party of 15 miniatures with a hero and a battle line, meaning you can use it as an army in a box. Hard-hitting Eyeless Namarti Thralls are guided by the mystical prowess of an Asharan Soul Scryer. Backed up by a fierce Akalean Alopex and a trio of eel riding Akalean Asharan Guard, which can also be built as Morsar Guard for extra flexibility. I forget sometimes how crazy those names are to say out loud. <laughs> but it looks like, I mean, if you're an, an Iden that Deepkin player, I feel like this is not a bad box set. I don't know if eels are as good as they used to be, but uh, I think it's still a decent set. All right. Uh, next Vanguard is for the Fire Slayers. Let's see what their composition includes. So it's 26 hot-headed miniatures, including hero and battle line, form a fiery core to this fierce force. A battlesmith chronicles the stories of the Fire Slayers to lead 20 axe-toting Volkite Berserkers and 5 ferocious Hearthguard Berserkers, who can be built instead as the indomitable Auric Hearthguard. So, yeah, probably not a bad. If, if you're just getting into the Fire Slayers, this is probably a good starting point as well. They're also adding in the Auric Runefather on Magmadroth, so I'm not so sure how good this unit is right now. 
I'm definitely not sure how it'll be with monsters going away. Well, not as relevant in the upcoming General's Handbook that we got a preview on here at uh, Warfest 2022 recently. Now, they've kind of jumped back in a way to more Night Haunt releases. So they have the new uh, War Scroll cards and the dice. What's interesting is they're not redoing the War Scrolls and the dice, at least not yet, for the Daughters of Cain. So yeah, I don't know if that's intentional or if that was an accident on the Warcom team, if they also meant to put in the Daughters of Cain dice and War Scroll cards. I guess we'll find out, but it seems a little odd that they're not uh, available this time around, at least not according to this preview. And then they go into a lot of Middle Earth releases. Now, Middle Earth admittedly is not one I play, so I can't speak too much to this. But it is a ton of models, it seems like. One of my friends that's a manager at a local game shop that I uh, patron quite often, uh, he's probably the only Middle Earth player I know locally. And so he's probably one hand excited, one hand crying that his wallet's about to be invaded. <laughs> a ton of stuff. Wow. Now... That said, the Fortress of Dol Gadur, this could be some like just decent terrain to pick up for some miniature agnostic type games too. Yeah, that might be worth considering. I'll be curious to see what that goes for price-wise. And then they got some Easterling dice sets. As much as I like GW dice, they're just so pricey for the amount you get. And then they have the Dragon Emperor of Rune. It's a pretty cool looking kit. I feel like some of these newer... Middle Earth releases are stylistically kind of deviating into more of like the standard GW style. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm just, it just seems to be the way it's going. Like this almost looks like a new Warcry warband. Crazy enough, as that sounds. But after seeing the horns that had shoot earlier this, well, I guess it had been last week during Warhammer Fest 2022, this kind of has a horns vibe going on. And then Dale Commanders. Yeah, if you play something like Frostgrave or another just fantasy uh, RPG or skirmish game, these models, I think, would be great for that, too. Dale Windless. Yeah, again, just tons of Middle Earth releases. And then they finally, <laughs> we've seen this one before, Rumbelow Sheepskin. He's a star player for Blood Bowl for the Halfling team. He can also play in some other teams as well. I think Old World Alliance is one of them. Uh the new Spike magazine that comes out will confirm specifically what teams he can play for. But I, I find this a fun model. I don't play halflings, but if I did, I'd probably consider picking this one up. I did a video on this one as well. This was previewed, I think, originally back at Adepticon as well. I may have a link to that one up above. Uh, but yeah, a fun sculpt. Not sure how good of a player he is. We'll find out. And then there's some Adeptus Titanicus stuff, which kind of. Didn't get anything for Warhammer Fest 2022. Uh, there was a friend of mine that's really into this game. And when they had the, the skirmish small box release day, which I think was Friday, last Friday. Um, yeah, nothing. <laughs> nothing on Titanicus. So here you go. And then the uh, this new white dwarf issue, I've heard some uh, rumblings about. And I'm trying to remember what it was for. I think it might have been... I think it was for Kill Team is what I saw some people talking about. Stuff for Kill Team. And then I'm also interested to see what it has for Warcry as well. Now, it mentions Age of Sigmar. And lately, you get some interesting uh, battalion stuff with the uh, Age of Sigmar rules out of White Dwarf lately. So I'll be curious to see. This could just be an overall... If you play a few of their different game systems, this could be a really good issue to pick up. Let's see if it has a little bit of information on it. Okay, rules for uh, sentry. Oh, that's it. That was the one. Using sentries. People want to know, what does that mean? Because sentries are like, I think initially people thought it was sentinels, not sentries. But yeah, I'm really curious what that refers to. If I think Glass Half Dead did a video on this recently, and he was also wondering how that would play into, play into how things are currently being ran in Kill Team. If that's going to change the composition of some of your, some of your Kill Teams based on what you can do with sentries. And then, of course, always there's always Black Library stuff. I enjoy their books, but I tend to listen to them on Audible, which I'm not sure if you can even do anymore with Warhammer Plus out. Yeah. Anyways, that might become just Warhammer Plus exclusive stuff, content, exclusive content 
there's my words in the future. But for now, I, th I think a lot of that stuff is still on Audible. And then just some more Hammer Plus plugs. I want to like this uh, subscription service, but they just need more content. And uh, the stuff they're adding, you know, the Warhammer Vault, that's fine. I guess if you're a younger uh, customer, if you will, and you don't have a local game store that has back issues on these things. But I think the demographic, as much as they're trying to get past it and get fresh blood into the mix, you know, you're looking at 30 and 40 something year olds and uh, we probably have all these issues. While it's nice to be able to look at it on a screen. I get just a huge sense of nostalgia being able to pull out the magazine. So when GW converted, this is kind of like they goofed up with going to Finecast. This is a tangent rant, just briefly. They kind of goofed up, I think, their whole business model with Finecast. Like I got out of playing all things uh, GW related uh, because I just couldn't stand Finecast. And then they, they took it one step further and they restructured the format of White Dwarves. And there was like, I don't know, a five to 10 year period of White Dwarves was like this smaller format uh, magazine. And it, I just lost that just like completely killed it for me until about 2013 or 14. I think I started kind of warming back up into it and definitely by like 2015, 16. And they relaunched the, the previous format of White Dwarf. And I've kind of been hooked ever since again. But as far as. It's a nice, convenient thing that they're putting it into Warhammer Plus, these older issues. It's not quite the same as having the physical product, especially if you can get those old back issues. But if not, and you, you just have a nostalgia feel, the fact that they rotate out so many of the rules, the, I think the only benefit of these is just that nostalgia benefit. Uh, that being said, you're not going to probably want to go back and get excited about some of the, like I mentioned, those old fine cast models. This Vault of White Dwarf, I'm just not sure what it's trying to do. If you have thoughts on that, definitely consider putting those in the comments below. I'd really like to hear what you have to say about having White Dwarfs in the vaults. Now, that being said, you know, thinking further briefly about it, they used to include a lot more scratch building DIY things. But even some of those tools that they used to use in those White Dwarf issues are not even around anymore. So all it's, it's kind of doing is it's kind of promoting how cool it, the hobby used to be. And it kind of just underscores where it's kind of, in my opinion, deviated. Uh, now, I, I do think they're kind of getting some of that back, although I'm not really a fan of the constant FOMO of boxes and the increase in prices. But as far as like the cool factor of, of the models, the fact that they're trying to dial things still back into where they used to be, I think, as an old player. But yeah, it's... It's it's wonky. All they need to really do to make Warhammer Plus work is get amazing new videos, animations, or live action based on their IP. But trying to like scrape the bottom of the barrel with their old stuff and kind of regurgitate it back in a different format, that, that should just be free. I don't see... And stuff like Lore Masters, the Battle Reports... You can kind of get that stuff better through independence on, you know, YouTube and other video formats, whether it's like BitChute, Odyssey, etc. There's just, if GW wants to do that, that should just be free marketing. And if they can't get their animations out in time, they should have never launched this until they had their library built up. Or figure out a way of incorporating this Warhammer Plus subscription in with like their Imperium Magazine subscription. There's, there's ways I think of doing it. And incorporating this content, just it's just not packaged right. That's just all there is to it, in my opinion. And I think it shows in how the stock's been doing, you know, on a financial standpoint as well. It's just it's just not there. But yeah, that's it for all the previews for this Sunday. Normally, I kind of break out each one of these into a separate video. But frankly, and I'm not complaining, there's just so much new content coming out from GW I admit this particular one, I'm kind of going the way of some of the other YouTubers that are out there and just condensing it down into one video just for all of the previews. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit for everyone in these. So I think that's OK. Personally, I'm very excited for the Night Haunt stuff. If this is a three pack box now labeled the Ethereal Court, I'll be OK with that. But I really wish they would have released these models individually. 
And then the Craven Throne Guard, I still think there's potential for this unit. It just may be a little bit more fringe scenarios. Um, I think it's worth getting. I think it's worth experimenting, especially for maybe narrative play. And and I, I still think there's a potential use for it competitively, but it's not super obvious yet. And again, as I understand it, since we did, I mean, I didn't mention it yet. We've all seen the battle tone for Night Hunt, right? Basically, it was spoiled uh, way early than it should have been, but it is what it is. That's in the past now, but we've all got enough time, I think, to see the reviews on this model. If you're a Night Hunt player, you need at least one of these. This thing is awesome. It's it's amazing. The stuff it can do for your other units in your army is just it's it's bonkers, man. You have to you have to have at least one. And then for Daughters of Cain players, I mean, you can't not skip this Battle Tome. Um, I believe it was also early leaked as well. Whatever. Um, it is what it is. My girlfriend's been considering getting into Age of Sigmar and Daughters of Cain appeals to her the most. And I've also been interested in this army. And along with the fact they did that Arena of Shades box set recently, which again, I th link up above, one of the best values out there for box sets. It's kind of like, well, I have a starting army now for Daughters of Cain inadvertently. So I, I think I think I may pick up this battle tome as well. But yeah, that's it for this Sunday's release. What do you all think? Are you excited for what's coming out next Saturday? Are you feeling kind of overwhelmed with just all of the announcements? I mean, it's it's been a lot. And Warhammer Fest 2022 just happened. So there's all sorts of hype for their other systems like the new Horus Heresy. Whew, yeah. It's, it's tons of stuff, but that's it for this one. If you haven't yet and you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, and sharing this content with your friends. It really does help with the growth of the channel, and it's greatly appreciated. Even if you don't have anything to say, even just putting like an emoji in the comments, it doesn't really matter. It's all about just helping with the growth of the channel, and anything you add in the comments below does help. All right, well, that's it for this one. As always, I hope you're doing well, be safe, take care, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.